So approximately 10 months back, I started buying Facebook or Meta's stock. The reason for buying was very simple, that the stock was trading at a 50-60% discount. It is a tech monopoly and a very strong balance sheet. For example, it has a lot of cash positions which it can deploy whenever it likes. So I put in a lot of money. But unfortunately, over the next few months, the stock started to correct. I ended up getting a lot of heat. But if you check the last six months performance of Meta, you will see that the stock has recovered by 140%. On top of this, if you check the performance of tech companies in the US, they have given very, very strong returns. My students have been buying US tech companies and have been investing with me. I give this commentary on YouTube. I make open videos. So my viewpoint on US tech investing has been quite clear. And now we are reaping benefits out of that. So now you might have a natural question that, okay, you are beating your own trumpet. You are just saying good, good things about you. Of course, you would have made mistakes. Yes. And I'm going to talk about my mistakes on this video so that you can learn. But here is a very good exercise that we can all do on this video. So take a look at this particular graphic. Here are Indian stocks that are trading at roughly 52 weeks discount. Again, very similar to Meta story that I was telling. These are big companies. These are not like small, small companies that I'm speaking about. They are there at 52 weeks discount. So if you can analyze it, have conviction to hold it and put your money intelligently in your portfolio, there is a good chance that you might make money. Please note the word that, that you might make money on these stocks. Am I buying all these stocks? The answer is no, I'm not buying all these stocks and I am going to put money on some of these stocks. Now, which stocks will I be putting my money? I will definitely reveal the answer on this video, but I will take you through some critical lessons that I've learned this year about stock investing by analyzing some of the mistakes that I've made. So I will speak about specific stocks that I've bought, sold, what mistakes did I make from them? So learnings that I'm drawing out of that, I will contextualize it and relate it to this specific chart. And then I will tell you my quick verdict of buying or not buying these stocks. So this is going to be a fast paced analysis. If you do like it, do press the like button because it would act as an indicator that you would want me to make more such videos. So let me start speaking about five critical mistakes that I've made this year. So the first mistake is ITC. So let me quickly explain the mistake that I made on ITC and the mistake is that I sold sold it too early. So at what levels had I bought ITC? So I had purchased ITC at somewhere around here at around 200 levels, right? And I sold it somewhere around 290 to 300 levels. So this is the range where I have sold it. Now, why did I do that? That why did I sell it at 290, 300 levels? Well, the answer lies here. So if you look at this particular range and you can clearly see it from the technical chart that between the time period 2017 all the way till 2019, so two, two and a half years, the stock consolidated in this zone. So I thought that the stock is going to enter this range and it is going to consolidate. And then depending on the market condition, I might rebuy the stock here. But unfortunately for me, the stock entered this range and it never consolidated. It just went up, up and up. Now, before you say that, you know what, what kind of a stock analyst are you that you missed out on such a big rally on ITC? Okay, so point number one is that I've been one of the prominent supporters of ITC. Please go and watch my videos from one, one and a half years ago. I was one of the only few people defending ITC as a stock. Some big, big portfolio fund managers sold ITC, moved on to other stocks. I stuck with it. I actually made money on ITC. So I made roughly 50% gains on ITC. Now, could I have made more? Definitely, I could have made more. Now, do I have regrets? The short answer is no, I do not have regrets. But definitely, I do agree that I should not have acted in a hasty manner in terms of selling my entire position on ITC. An important point is that no analyst in the world can help you buy a stock right at the bottom that okay ITC has fallen till here this is the absolute bottom so buy here and then you sell it off here if this is actually the top right so you can't perfectly predict the bottom or top you have to go by your analysis your conviction and accordingly take pets but do I agree that I have made a mistake 100% I had made the mistake what my ideal strategy should have been that I should have liquidated only 50% of my position here and rest I should have held which I did not do. And therefore I agree that I acted in a hasty manner and I sold and liquidated my entire position because I was quite enticed by the actual profits that I was making. So now you might have a natural question that, okay, at what time are you going to re-enter ITC if at all? And second is that should we be buying ITC right now? Okay, so I will give you my verdict. It is not as if that you need to follow me. Please form your own opinions. See, I'm not going to buy ITC at this juncture and the reason has to do with the fundamentals. So let me take you through the sales figures and profit figures. 
so what you will see is that by 2018 right the total sales was roughly 45 right and right now five years have happened have they even doubled their sales the answer is no they have not doubled it what about profits have they doubled their profits absolutely not the profits have at most gone by 40 50 percent if you take a look at the compounded profit growth again this is not like super impressive if you take a look at the sales figure again this is not super impressive so the natural question comes that okay why is it that the itc stock is giving a run-up well, this is called as the pent up theory. So let me quickly explain that. Now see, Rohit Sharma is a very good batsman. Now, if you have to make a bet that you know what, in first inning, Rohit Sharma made a zero, second inning, he made a zero. In third inning, if I ask you that, okay, will you take a bet that Rohit Sharma is going to make like 20 runs plus, what will be your bet? Your most likely answer is that yes, he will do it because law of averages or law of mean reversion. What in simple terms it means is that if Rohit Sharma's batting average is let's say 50, then he did not score any run in inning one, inning two, and in third inning, he will somewhat compensate, right? So he's going to make a little bit of runs at least. So therefore, taking this bet is mathematically sound. Now, something similar happens in the stock market. So if you take a look at the stock market performance of ITC, what you will notice is that if you consider this range, right, from 2013 all the way to 2021, 2022, so this has been almost 10 years, ITC has given 0% return. So now if it has started to give some run-up, it is likely that it will continue to give a little bit of run-up. So then comes the natural question that, okay, why is it that you are not buying ITC right now? See, my hypothesis is, and I can of course be incorrect, my hypothesis is that it is going to come back in this range, right? That it is going to re-enter this range at some point. Maybe it will go up like this and then it will start falling and it will come back and it will trade around this range at some point. So that is the point for which I'm waiting. Now, what if the stock does not enter this range? Well, it's fine. I will miss the bus. It's not as if that I have to make all my money from ITC. So I'm cool with that. I have already done my hedging. For example, I have built a lot of position on Nestle. I have built a lot of position on HUL. I am building a lot of position on Page Industries. So these type of companies perform the exact same role for me as would ITC do in my portfolio. Now, let me talk about mistake number two by taking you to the example of a US stock called as Allegro Microsystem. Now, these days, there is a lot of talk about artificial intelligence, machine learning, vagera, vagera. this technology is like picking up chat GPT is going to take our jobs, what not, right? So what is Allegro Microsystems? So in very simple, easy to understand terms, it manufactures semiconductor chips, integrated chips. And what that ends up doing is that it facilitates this entire AI movement, especially when it comes to auto cars. For example, you might have heard that Tesla is making a lot of driverless cars. Now going forward 15-20 years, there is a very very high probability that we will move towards a driverless ecosystem. This change is coming fast. Now for that, artificial intelligence algorithms need to get strengthened up. Now Allegro Microsystem is one such company that is fueling that particular movement. That they are manufacturing integrated ICs, chips, microsystems that will go in these driverless cars. So this becomes a very prominent talked about company. And just to show you the performance of this company, that in the last six months, this company has given 40% return. So then comes the natural question that, okay, if you are bullish about Allegro Microsystem, then what mistake have you made on this stock? Well, to cut the long story short, I have not purchased it up until this point, right? So I have not purchased it. Since it has started to fall, I have started to build some positions, right? Now, what I should have done is that I should have taken this fundamental bet approximately a year back. What would have that allowed me to do? Well, it would have allowed me to number one, benefit from this, book some profits. And third is that lower my risk on the stock. Now, what is the meaning of this? Now, Allegro Microsystem is a new age company. Now, when it comes to these new age companies, you know, they can act like a fad also. What happens is that VCs put in a lot of money into these type of companies that leads to this growth stage of the stock. So whenever you're doing investing in these type of companies, it is very important to catch the growth cycle. So I have unfortunately missed the first growth cycle of this stock. Now I have started to build a little bit of position. I'm waiting for the stock to fall a little bit more or at least consolidate. Then I'll be building more position. I will definitely announce in the member community tab of YouTube when I'm buying, what am I doing with Meta stock also? So I'm going to make all these announcements on member community tab tomorrow. So back to this mistake that since I have missed this first round or leg of growth, it is very unlikely that this VC driven growth is going to come on this stock again, right? Now, fundamentally, this 
company needs to get stronger and only then it will move into that sustainable zone right so i have missed on this opportunity of identifying this easy cycle because it is fairly easy to figure out where vc money is going so i hope this second mistake is clear now let me talk about the third example which is hdfc amc and everyone is aware what is happening with hdfc amc so let me quickly take you through that and let me explain you the mistake that i have made there so here is the price charting history of hdfc amc and the mistake that i made was that i kept buying on this entire slide right and i exhausted my money somewhere here now why did i do that what was my thought process around it so let me quickly explain now this is back september october of 2021 this is where the stock market started to correct quite aggressively and this is where a lot of negative sentiments in the stock market came up there was russia ukraine war there were inflation crises and a bunch of problems were happening now i thought that all these different pieces of news have been aggressively factored into the market now amc companies how do they make money it's very simple that for example if hdfc amc is let's say doing 100 crores of business so how do they get this 100 crores that people like you and me will start our sips and every month we will keep on doing sip so their aum or asset under management will keep on going up now when the market sentiments are very good in the stock market companies like hdfc amc are going to do fairly well but on the flip side if the market sentiments are bad and people are pulling out a lot of their money then companies like hdfc amc are going to suffer the most so i thought that during this slide or this entire phase the market sentiments have have turned completely negative right and there will not be further downfall of the market sentiment so i built quite aggressive position and by this point i had exhausted my money so the average buying price for me came out to be roughly 2000 rupees so still i am at maybe like 14 15% loss right on hdfc amc and as the stock market sentiments recover i will benefit but where is it where i am exactly suffering on hdfc amc well it is in terms of time correction that almost one year has passed and hdfc amc has actually given negative returns so i should have been a little bit more judicious in terms of building my position i should have built my position little bit slowly on hdfc amc many a times people give out general rules ki aapko char installment mein khareedna chahiye 6 mein khareedna chahiye it also depends on the nature of the stock here when we are speaking about camps here if you are speaking about hdfc amc or any amc company these are entirely market sentiment driven stocks therefore it becomes important to slowly build up your position and slowly cut your positions so this has been my primary finding on this stock so now going on to the fourth mistake that i made and the mistake was that i built up my position too aggressively too soon now for this let me use the example of the consumer durables industry so let me take you to the entire chart and show you the history and then i'll explain it okay so to help you understand this mistake let me take you to the whirlpool's chart so whirlpool is one of the top prominent consumer durable companies in india and if you consider its stock performance you will see that it has fallen from its peak by roughly 52% even now it is trading at a 52% discount so in my case i started building more positions on this stock somewhere around here right when it was around 33 34% discount i thought that this is a good consolidation point so why did i think that this is a good consolidation point well the reason is simple that this is where the stock had previously consolidated so i started building the position from here i purchased almost like 50% of the money that i had to put on stocks like whirlpool quite aggressively here itself then the stock fell more right so i built more position here because this was again a consolidation zone so i put like another 30 odd percent money that i had to put and then by this zone right i put and exhausted all my money that i had to put on whirlpool and whirlpool type of consumer durable stocks so i was completely out by this point but the stock fell even more now it has started to recover and it is going sideways so of course i am at a loss when it comes to this stock So now the thing is that if I go and analyze this mistake the biggest mistake that I made here was that I took these positions quite early in an industry where the sentiments went really really low very very fast think about it this way that when the 2020 covid crisis broke out there were two specific problems that consumer durable industries were facing and i had made a separate video so you can go and watch it but i will present a very quick summary here so there were two specific problems the first was an inventory build up problem so basically for example if you consider whirlpool and if it manufactures acs or washing machines then usual life span of these products is what around 3 to 5 years so these days products are designed in such a way that it will not last for more than 3 5 years 
things. So now what ended up happening was that because these sales slowed down. Why? Because after COVID, a lot of people lost their job. There was a general slowdown in the economy. So as a result, the sales figure went down, right? So all the fall that I had shown you, it predominantly happened because there was contraction in sales. But what I had not accounted for was that, hey, there will be like inventory buildup problem, which will take another 12 to 18 months to transpire completely. So I should have waited a little bit longer for both of these problems to get solved. But I only accounted for the first problem and that is the mistake that I made. So this is a lesson that I have learned and now I will be applying it in this cycle. Now you might have a natural question that okay, ab kharidna chahiye whirlpool ki nahi and should we buy consumer durables? Short answer is yes. I feel that they are at a very good juncture right now. Again, I keep on giving a lot of commentary on YouTube paid member community. You would consider joining it. I explain all the things fundamentally there. Okay, so my final mistake was that buying an asset just because it has fallen too much, right? And let me explain that story by using the example of Coinbase. Now, I am a believer in cryptocurrencies, especially Bitcoin. Of course, you and I can disagree. Please do not you know, start a fight that, you know, why are you supporting crypto, this, that. It's not as if that I'm married to crypto. 80% or almost 80% of my money is still in stocks. Just for diversification, I invest in cryptos. And around six, seven months back, I had already made the announcement that I am shifting all my money only to one single cryptocurrency, which is Bitcoin. But anyways, coming back to this mistake, so you can see that this is Coinbase. And for people who do not know what Coinbase does, it is a listed crypto exchange based in the US, right? So it's a regulated crypto exchange, so to say. Now, the Coinbase stock will go up if the entire sentiments around cryptocurrencies are bullish, it will go up. If the sentiments are bearish, then Coinbase will come down. So this is the general overarching viewpoint about Coinbase. Now, this stock had fallen quite aggressively. I built like very little positions here. Why? Because I'm a direct investor in Bitcoin. So therefore, either I invest in Bitcoin or Coinbase, it's almost one and the same thing for me. Now, when it fell quite aggressively up until this point, there were almost an 80-85% correction. I started building positions quite aggressively. What was the primary hypothesis there? Well, the hypothesis was that, okay, cryptocurrencies, at least to a certain group of people, it will continue to appeal. So therefore, I consolidated and built my position in Coinbase, right? So that was the intent with which I invested. But over the last one year, nothing major has happened. Actually, if you go and press this one year return, you will see 55% negative. For me, it is not 55% negative because I built majority of the position starting here. So for me, I'm close to zero or minus three, four percent. I will have to double check my accounts. Now, what is the learning that I've had? Well, the learning has been, and let me juxtapose this. So the word of the day today is juxtapose. Let me know what does that mean? So if you juxtapose this with Bitcoin, and if you write BTC, in the last six months, Bitcoin has gone up by 42%. Now, I should have maintained my investment thesis that if I'm putting money in crypto, I should just stick with Bitcoin, not go with Coinbase. Why? Because Coinbase is going to be heavily regulated compared to Bitcoin. I'm not saying that Bitcoin is not going to get regulated. It will be, and it's already getting regulated. A lot of regulations have come up in the US, but Coinbase, given its structure that it's a publicly listed company on US stock exchange, it is going to get even more regulated. So from that perspective, it made little bit more sense to put more money into Bitcoin over something like Coinbase. But in my case, I split that money between Bitcoin and Coinbase. I have learned now that it is much more beneficial to take like two, three concentrated bits. Now, probably I'll make a separate video on this topic because it will get confusing. But I hope that these five critical mistakes that I have made, you will be able to learn it and that will hopefully help you save some money. Now, let me start applying those mistakes for these group of stocks. So I will be very, very quick here. Otherwise, the video will become very lengthy. So let me give you my quick snippets on this. So number one comes Infosales. Now, this is a negative sentiment in the stock market regarding the industry. Does it make the industry bad? The answer is no. Now, am I confident about picking Infosys as an individual stock in the IT domain? The answer is no. I do not even have faith on TCS. I have been building positions on Nifty IT. Again, I will show you snippets from community member posts when I have been buying, etc, etc. So, since I am already building positions in the index, I am not individually buying Infosys. Sipla seems to be heavily regulated, so I'm avoiding this stock. Tech Mahindra again has a similar story to Infosys DCS, so I will not comment too much there. Tata Consumer is a very good stock and I will be putting some money and I'll be building more of my positions. I'll make the announcements whenever I'm buying this stock. SBI Life is something that I've already started building my positions on, roughly like two, three weeks back that I've started it. Then comes Wipro. So I feel that Wipro again will be lumped into this same category like Tech Mahindra, Infosys, all that. Reliance I'm not buying and I do not see 
any point in buying Reliance right now. It is going through a lot of infrastructure changes. It is trying to demerge some of its businesses. So a lot of action is happening. So I would avoid the stock as of now. Second and more important reason is that a major growth leg has already happened with Reliance. Similarly, approximately like a year back, a strong round of growth has happened in Reliance somewhere like year, year and a half back. So I don't see any point in building very extensive positions in Reliance. So I am completely out of the stock. I do not own any Reliance. I purchased it. I have done swing trading on it, made good money, but I am out as of now. Then finally comes TCS. So I have already given you my commentary that I will not be buying TCS. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do press the like button and I will see you soon.